need to order roll call. Camilla? Here. Tom? Chris? Here. And Don? Yes. The record side. Okay, petitions or communications, oral or written? I wanted to mention something I know a while back. Um, you invited several of the board of commissions to attend. Really what, one show or two shows? Yeah, so, I mean, um, like Marty worked on that. She, I think it was 17 different boards and commissions she got a hold of. We had a discussion just the other night. Yeah. Uh, we had a discussion about that same thing is how do we get these people to participate? We know that they are volunteers and you can't force them to do that, but we would ask that they volunteer, that they come in to participate. I don't know if, does Marty use like the dual pole system? You know, I'm not really sure exactly what the she uses, but that's a really good idea, Mayor. And yeah. I don't know, um, yeah. I participated in dual, in dual polls, you know, send it out like a month ahead of time, went to availability, yeah. and get the most people uh -huh. to, right. uh, to respond. And, and he, he maybe even... We maybe even have one at night because we sure didn't well, get well anybody. To but it'll we also didn't get people who were city employees who were part of yeah, those boards. Right. Yeah, invited as well. Yeah, right. and, and in all due respect to Marty, I think she she actually even called them yeah. for follow up, and they said they'd be here. They'd be they here, were. and then they didn't show up. You know. So, but the doodle poll is a good idea. You have it in writing at that point too. You know, and and if like you know you were there the other night, and, you know the whole idea is we're trying to see what we can do be, to become a destination and we need input from at least the chairs from these or the vice chairs to these different from these different commissions uh, so that we can kind of come to an agreement as to you know what what are our priorities mm -hmm. what what do we need to do to establish ourselves as that destination point what does it look like you know, what are the different parts and pieces to this? Mm -hmm. And we need to have it from the various boards and commissions to, because one of the things is like a pretty who said that um, might have been Tom, where um, you, you, have, you invite everybody, a few show up, you make that few make the decision, and then you have all the others saying, well, why did you make that decision? We, we, we don't like it. You know, yeah. so it's, and that's the really frustrating part that we even have as council whenever we have uh, work sessions or we have you know, other meetings for other purposes. So uh, how do you get people to really jump in and participate? Is that, it's it's not person? unusual or unique to Trinidad right. though. The, right. the last Everywhere. city that I was deeply involved in tourism with, we had the same issues trying to, <clears throat> trying to get people together so we could focus on something and uh, they did it. They wouldn't show, and then they'd say, "No, well, where'd that come from?" You know, it's yeah. But you yeah. mentioned about maybe trying to have something, maybe like in an evening, possibly, uh -huh. maybe. or maybe at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, so I do them at doing the pool. It might be better. You're right. And have some time frames because you know I yeah. have, I participate in doing pools, and they'll give you multiple days, but multiple times of the day are you available from three to five or whatever. And, but that it, it also made me aware of sitting in the other night is that, you know, usually about every year or so we do a presentation from the tourism board to city council to sort of update everything that we've done. And uh, and uh, we haven't done that lately, so we need to because there's always a list nobody really realizes. No one knows what we're doing. You know? And it always amazes me, too, the amount of people that don't know where we get our money from. Totally. You know, yeah. It, still, it, it, it's still it's, made, it's, uh, it amazes yeah. me it's too. It's called tourism. Yeah, yeah. right. Tax, you know. Right, right. So can, but, uh, can I ask something? Um, Do you all have something that says if you miss three meetings, you we're going to review you and you might be out? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Does that intimidate anybody? Oh, well, we our have board a is a strong board. We don't. We, we, we strong don't, board. We might we, miss, but no one's really has missed it, three meetings in a row. Never. Our um, board is a really incredibly okay. strong board. Okay. We, well, when yes. you were talking about volunteers, I didn't know you were talking about board. No, you were, just we were talking, talking about, about all the boards and all the boards the that are out there. Every board that is yeah. out there, no one showed up. The, we've no, had wow. we've <laughs> had in the past uh, couple of years uh, removal of a 
couple of people from different boards and commissions. Sure. Okay. But well, not this one. This one has been a really great board. Yeah, board. we did have one removal from this board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A while ago, not two. this current board, though. Right, yeah. not this current right. board, but yeah. right. No, but we we did really try very hard to get all these groups together. And so we'll try, but uh, Mayor, we'll your mayor, your idea is a great one. Instead of setting the time, that. and yeah, no, absolutely, it's great. Sure. The other thing you might have to do is maybe you can't get everybody together, or maybe have two different meetings. Uh -huh. Even though you have to bring you know the information yeah. together at some point. Yeah. Uh, one thing that might help there is that when if you have two different meetings like that, and maybe like the uh, when all the boards and chairs. All the board uh -huh. chairs come to a meeting. Typically, they all show, uh -huh. and that way uh, you can disseminate that information at that point. Yeah, that no, that's that true. Help. And I think one of the beautiful, but one of the hard things about our town is, from from my viewpoint, is that we have so much. So you know, we've been pushing the outdoor recreation, but always in our back pocket, we know about the architecture and the art and the, all the water in the area and just so many different things and so even as the tourism board you know there are so many great things about our community to move forward and so you know there's not just any one thing and really that will make us the one thing that's really strong for us as a community so that people that have all different varied interests come here because we have so many. But, but I think we need to, we also need some data on who comes and who spends money and who's willing to come and spend money and really focus on that. Because if you try to be everything to everyone, you're right. nothing, right. Right. Right? right? You can't right. do that. You have to have, you have to have some really like dig into the, to the actual analytics of who is coming, who spends the night, who spends money, and really think about why they're doing that and then figure out how to add to that and you know what, who are the people coming that are that are generating that tourism? And what do they need? So well, I mean, there's both the, the there's so the both advertising that. component, yeah. but there's also the economic development because we're completely underserved when it comes to tourists. Mm -hmm. I mean, walking down the street yesterday, every shop in town pretty much is closed. You go into Purgatory, it's the only place open, and it's packed. I was, you know, <laughs> and so that's a problem, mm -hmm. you know, that we are, don't have that we don't have outdoor seating, it doesn't look like anything's open, yeah, there's no umbrellas, seating. you know, those things all make a difference to a town being mm -hmm. welcoming, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, I was just in small towns, all, all, I just did a camping trip across the southern part of the state, and, you know, we don't have much, we don't have the infrastructure that we really need, so there's right. economic development. Well, that's the whole idea, as a matter of fact, that was brought up the other night, and I think you brought it up, uh, Marty brought it up, and then that gentleman that was online mm -hmm. to hire, I think you guys are looking at somebody to hire somebody to come in mm -hmm. and uh, look at what we need to do. Well, uh, uh, you know, uh, when I moved from Main Street, and there is no place like Main Street USA, I just want you to know, commercial is great, mm -hmm. but when I moved to my new location, I told Jerry I will never have another plant down there in my entire life to water because I'm done watering it. Well, I'm dead wrong. I'm going to have plans. It's something that's got to liven up to let people know that commercial well, is alive and well because prob it doesn't. The problem, though, with that stretch of, of shops that are right along there, right next to you, there's not a sign. Mm -hmm. They all have stickers on the windows, but we need little signs that stick out from the buildings that hang up. All the historic, I, I want to all because the it is hard. All the historic towns throughout the entire state, I just took pictures in Crete because it was so stinking cute. And we can't say, oh, we're too small, because they're teeny tiny. <laughs> Population 300 I, in winter, I, agree. I think. I, I you think know? We do. And you can't, none of our shops have signs. Well, you we know, need to do something, signs. we need to do something this winter uh, yeah. to get ready for next summer. Yes, we do. I'm big winter. Winter. You know, but those yeah. cute signs yeah. that hang out, like Fisher's Big Outfitters so just cute. put up a nice sign. They do. Um, Kayvon's building, he put out that sign that uh -huh. sticks out and it's cute. You know, there's a few others. I think um, Cedas has one that also sits out. And yeah. they should. We I should really be encouraging yeah. our businesses yeah. to have better signage. So, so what's your projection. what's your projection about hiring somebody? Because uh, from what that me the work session the other night, it was brought yeah. up that yeah. I guess you guys are looking to hire somebody to come in and facilitate. So yeah, for us, I, that was that was brought up the other night. I spoke to Kathy Ritter yesterday, who is somebody we've been talking about possibly hiring. Right. right. She sounds interested, but she also felt like there may be some grants from the Department of Tourism 
that would be better suited. The I guess the Plains and what's the name of yeah. that community? Yeah. Yeah. They have one of those grants, but it's specific. It's to the region, and Marty's been working on that. But I think we as a tourism board need to think about that and not have necessarily Marty in charge of executing that for the town of Trinidad. So she recommended another grant that's there, um, and I wrote it down, and it's at my house. <laughs> but here's, running, here's, you know. the thing, um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing with grants, though, is that. Yeah. When you know they have start dates and end dates, yeah. you know when uh, we're already in into July. Yeah. I mean we're at that tipping point. Right. Right. Yeah. Of, you know by the time you get the grants, by the time they give you the grants, and you hire somebody, it could be Christmas or January right. by the time you're able to even begin yeah. work on that. We yeah. need to try to get somebody in here a lot quicker than that. Well, and that was so that, <coughs> so that we could begin to you know move this process forward. I heard back from the director of the de um, development, um, a destination development group, and he gave me the timeline, and I felt the same way when I saw that timeline. I think it's too long, and I do think because we have some resources as a tourism grant, we should hire somebody, but I'm going to reach out to him and see, you know, if, some, if there's somebody who's better than Kathy, I'll reach back out to Kathy and see if she feels like this is the right thing for her, because we did talk for quite a while or if there's somebody else that would do it, because she's doing some bigger projects. She's working for the state of Nevada. And there, was a, there was a gentleman that night that spoke of that that's what he does. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, yeah. uh, Marty, I think, took his name down. And, and just as a side note, we have used those before for the city of Trinidad, yeah. and we had the Sixtus contract for a few years, and they're the ones that produce the booklet uh -huh. that we have now, yeah. but we've just updated it. But I don't think but it's a booklet we need. Yeah. We need a roadmap. Yeah, yeah. Like we're, you know, when we're doing this advertising, we're advertising here, we're advertising there, we're advertising here. There's no consistency of branding. The town itself, okay, we have logos, but we don't really have a brand. Like, who are we as a community? Right, and we also need to know where do we focus, like what's going to bring in the most dollars in tier one, like where do we focus for the next two or three years, and then maybe a tier two. So maybe the first tier we really focus on outdoor recreation, and then the second tier we really focus on architecture. One of the problems with the architecture is half our buildings are falling down, you know. So it's nice to say, Oh, yeah, you can go outside and look at them, but if you can't go into the brewery building because the raccoon's going to fall on your head and you need to wear a hard hat then there's a problem, right? And so I think we really need to think about, you know, in a more strategic way, mm -hmm. um, really where to focus, and also have some consistency across everything that we're marketing towards. And, and you know, I, I think it would be really good for you just to, to see what Sixtus had done, because they, yeah. they did have a roadmap for us yeah. at one point. We should um, look at it. We yeah, just it for an update, but we do need to put it out as an RFP. Well, and 2020 changed all of our lives and how we travel and what we visit and what we care about, right? right? So, you know, I do think even we maybe take what that was there and build on it, but, you know, sorry. But anyway, I just think that we need to bring yeah. somebody in that could give us mm -hmm. the guidance. Yeah. The guidance. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, okay. All right. The Chamber of Commerce, you're right. up. No. Uh, my name is Amanda Korth. I am the President of the Chamber of Commerce. We originally had planned this presentation two Wednesdays ago and were unable to do that and it was going to be scheduled for last Monday. Couldn't do that. Um, so we couldn't really reschedule everything else that we had. But we purposely wanted to present to y'all first so we could get your input and exactly what you're saying um, is that we kind of need to steward whatever identity we're going to have. And I think the Chamber is in a unique place to do that, uh, to do that with the businesses and get them all on board with wherever it is that we want to go. Make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so, Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce, Trinidad Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce. We want to align with the, all the objectives of the city and county. Uh, we want to take a poll from everybody and figure out where it is that we need to focus. So I've got a whole lot of ideas here on different things that we can focus on, and I want to get your feedback on what you like, what you don't like. We also talked to Walsenberg on Monday morning, and we talked to the city on Monday evening. Um, so I'd love to, and we got some great notes from that, but I'd love to get your feedback on where you think we should focus, because you really have your finger on the pulse of 
where the city's going in this whole community. So, so when you spoke to Walsenberg, was that like the chamber there? What what the, format was that? Uh, Carlton Croft, the director of economic development there, uh -huh. called us and said, hey, we're just seeing where it is that we can partner. Uh -huh. So we came up with a few ideas and talked to him about it. And he goes, I want you to come down here and talk to a few hand-selected people. Uh -huh. So there were like six people down there, and we got some good feedback from that. Uh -huh. So is, was there any partnering with Walsenberg that you came up with yet? Uh, everything on the Legend of Highways. We uh -huh. had the president of the Highway of Legends, the uh -huh. Highways, uh, and he loved some of the ideas that we put together. Uh -huh. um, everybody's trying to do more with less, right? Like you said, COVID right. changed everybody's lives. Everybody's trying to do more with less. So my whole uh, focus is trying to create a lot of strategic partnerships so that we don't have to do all the heavy lifting and spend all the money and we make a bigger impact. Um, so ca I said casting a vision for the future with the business community, engaging in equipment businesses with a growth mindset, and collaboration with a lot of different partners. That's one of the reasons that we you know, talked with Carlton. When he came to us, we said, hey, this is great. We'd love to do that. Wait, there's a question again. Uh, so engaging in equipment, equipping businesses with a growth mindset, so as the chamber do you, do you mean that by like classes? Do you yes. mean that with like outdoor stuff outside their windows or in oh. which, in which, which? I'm really thinking chamber, business like, classes. Uh -huh. I'm thinking business coaching. Uh -huh. I'm thinking, uh, I've only lived here 10 months. Uh -huh. uh, but what, what I've heard, and Amy mm -hmm. and I went out and talked to a whole lot of longtime businesses in Trinidad and said, what would you like to see from the chamber? Uh -huh. And consistently, a lot of things that we heard, not only from the businesses, but everybody else, this is a big feast or famine place, uh -huh. right? Industries come in, you make a lot of money, then they leave, and yeah, and, and, and it's become very, it is what it is, uh -huh. right? So if we can equip people for a growth mindset for, we did this economic development for outdoor recreation, we're doing things to see a lot more people come in. How does your business need to expand? Get ready for this, we're gonna make this sustainable, uh -huh. right? I also want to embrace a lot more of the farmers ranchers because industries may come, industries might go, but the underpinnings, economic underpinnings of our whole community is farming and ranching. Mm -hmm. Somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in the outskirts, not in the downtown area. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I'm just, yeah. In, in terms of economic stability. Yeah. I well, want so to always appreciate. Probably the biggest for me, besides the besides agriculture, just to add to that would be. Um, you know, of course, city government is large employers. Uh, uh, the, the still oil and gas out there is large employers. The coal mines, large employers. The railroad is large employers. So, you know, we're, we're, I mean, that's one of the benefits that our town has is that we have in the background a lot of other jobs that are really, you know, sustaining economically uh, the, the, the power of Los Alamos County, not exactly the downtown area, you know. You know, one of the things that you may try to do, you know, it, the agriculture, like I said, has kind of been the underpinning of the, of the area. Uh, the one thing that the residents recognize is a lot of these farmers and ranchers do not shop locally here. You know, they don't buy their equipment here. Of course, a lot of their equipment, there's not much to buy anymore, but there's other things that they could buy. But, and I, I think that uh, you might want to talk to, like, Tony Hess, because yeah. he's big in the... In the and find out what the reasons are that a lot of these people leave town to buy the groceries, they leave town to okay. buy their vehicles. And yeah. So th those type of things are, yeah. are of interest. And also yeah. outfitters. We have a whole bunch of outfitters. Yeah. Do they the shop here too? Yeah, but the, we really do have a lot of beautiful outfitters. And, and, and you know, I, I, you have a really good point about the agriculture in the area. For more of us to have more farm to table, I know that I know that at Club 14 we buy all lo loud and beef, but I know that LA Grill does some others and other people in town, and to sort of highlight in that community more. So actually, that brings to the next bullet. I want to embrace businesses of all different sectors. We've got a very large uh, veterans uh, administration here that helps veterans in the area, farmers and ranchers, outfitters. Um, all of those. I want to embrace all of those. And I do have something around schools because um, when we talked to a lot of the businesses, they said one thing they get very disappointed about is that kids that graduate from high school or graduate from college, they ski daddle. They get out of here. So I'd love to go to schools and talk to them about this is the career that you can have here, mm -hmm. right? Trinidad State College does the entrepreneur certificate. Um, 
We also have a New Elk Mine. We have Evergreen. These are the careers that you can pursue there. So trying to bring people happy to stay here and help it grow. Make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so we're also going to start reaching out to businesses in all of Los Angeles County. We've been focusing in the past just in the city, and we're going to be focusing beyond that. Uh, I have here, we have Kayla, Kayla Torres, who is on our board, and also Claudia Henning. And Claudia Henning is in charge of membership. Okay. So she's going to start pursuing out uh, in Los Angeles County. You know, another thing that... Uh, in the previous city manager that we had, one thing he called that uh, business gardening. And like going, going to a business and saying, are you interested in growing your business? What does it look like? And maybe you can help you know, plan their growth. And that is actually one of the questions when we went around and asked all the long-term businesses. We said, what, is your, what are your goals? What are your hopes and dreams for you and your business? And weirdly, a couple of answers we got, we said, well, I'm at that age where I'm really not planning anything anymore. I don't have any goals. And I said, really, how old are you? 57. <laughs> so that's another, it's growth mindset. You're not done at 57, right? You can grow much bigger. You can do a lot more with your business. So is the chamber planning to do some mentoring with some of these businesses or how are you kind of, I mean, what does that look like? Well, let's go through the whole thing okay, and you sorry. tell me what you'd like to see based on tourism, where you want the whole community to go, okay? So, again, uh, the objectives is to bring growth and opportunities, small business, residents, tourism, investors, colleges. You know, what's really interesting is uh, some of the benefit that I saw on some of the um, events or some of the initiatives that I'm going to talk about uh, would benefit, you know, hotels, obviously, realtors, and storage facilities. You know, the new thing is people living in their RV and just going from place to place and, and working out of a collaborative workspace, right? Because now you can work remote. Have you tried to get a storage unit here? I'm on a waiting list for a four foot by eight foot. I can't even find one up in Pueblo. So, anyway, but I have that. Um, so one idea, when we talked to Walsenburg and a lot of the cities on the um, Highway of Legends, what if we do, what if we coordinate calendars, right? So we at least, there's not a lot of events overlapping each other. And then we give vendors and we give tourists uh, a reason to come down here every weekend during tourism season. No, I think that's a great idea. I thought the Legends was doing that. Uh, Legends, the magazine, their online site. I thought S Steve was really pretty. Um, and I think he was supposed to be here today. Maybe he'll tell us. But I know that it, he pushes that all the time. That he he does the best calendar. So I, I presumed that just as all on coordination. That's just publishing. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's just publishing. I'm talking about talking with the cities and say, uh -huh. hey, okay, we know the Caveman Festival is here. The Caveman Music Concert uh -huh. thing. Well, I yeah, do it again. Um, but uh, just figuring out when everybody's festival and trying not to have a lot of them overlap. So How just are you going to, some of the festivals that's been going on for years, expect them to move? I don't expect them to move. I'm just expecting that we can provide enough information that people would come down here maybe every weekend. And that would extend to vendors. Everybody wants to get good artisan vendors at their festival. So what if we had one form that said, which festivals do you want to participate in? If you want to do all of these, this is the discount you get, et cetera. Because with the cost of gas right now, they want to be very efficient with their time and which festivals they want to go to. But yeah, you're right. That's going to be a big challenge. I'm not expecting people to move things. But I am saying, hey, if you're trying to decide what date to do this particular thing, let's do it on this weekend and do the other one on this one. So not the big ones, but maybe the smaller ones. And I don't know. I mean, the, it's a pie in the sky idea that we'd have something every single weekend and they wouldn't overlap. But I'd love to try somehow and at least collaborate with the different cities. And how can we do that? Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I would like to see a lot more events yeah. too. Because if you look into, like, and I know that we think we do a lot of events, but it, like, um, if you ask um, some of the larger communities that. Um, are the mountain communities, how many events that are supported from the tourism board. It's like, I forget what Aspen is, but it's like 900. You go, how can you do 900? Because a lot of times they have 
art going on here, while they have a little kids' fair going on here, while they have a, a lot of small fairs happen on the yeah. same weekend. So, you know, it's really to get a lot of events in all the area. It is. We, we don't, to my knowledge, oh, in the oh. city of Trinidad have an event coordinator for it that's mm -hmm. employed by the city doing. Um, that was part of Marty's title, and I think, and yeah. I think that she's think just got so much. Work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think she has too much on I think that's I'm going to use the farmer's market as an example. We go every Saturday. Every Saturday is a function. Sometimes people start it afterwards, after the farmer's market that gets off at 1. They do it at night, which is great. Uh, you know, I have 42 vendors coming this weekend. If they all that's show fantastic. up, I don't know. But that is the most I've had. Yeah, so it would be really great if we had something going on at night, too. Yeah, it would be but wonderful yeah. we had something yeah. going on at night. I have, yeah. we have, I should say, I keep saying I. Yeah. Chris, come on, correct me on that. We have <laughs> music going on every weekend. Yeah, no, you've there. done a fabulous job with that. Every but weekend. no, that, this yeah. is, it's good. It and it is nice, but I would love to see something else. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these vendors that are coming down here, sometimes when they go to the, another one, they're mm -hmm. exhausted. Okay. They are totally exhausted, but they're not going to miss that farmer's market because they know how well they do. Uh, but to have something to do it, they're perfectly willing to, yeah. to go. And these vet vendors are dedicated vendors. Some of these are really dedicated. You talk about beef. I had Christine Lauben last year. I had two beef people come into the farmer's yeah, market. This year I only have one. I could have had four last oh, year, wow. and I went, oh my God, I kind of blew that one. But there are people selling beef, even at farmer's markets. Fantastic. Christine just opted out this year, yeah. that's all. Mm -hmm. So I have the salad pitches, and they do very, very well. Awesome. So, you know, it is, it, but it's hard. Yeah. It is yeah. hard. But I would like to see other things. You know, as a business owner downtown, one of the very few, I'm gonna say this, um, Everybody says the gas is, it's the problem with the gas last year. Have you driven on the highway? The highway is packed, okay? It's not that. Well, we were so much busier last year. And there was so much more money out there that people were spending freely. They got reined in now, the reality struck them. It's not because they don't have the money, it's that they have all that extra money that we were doing. I'm back on track to my 019. Not my 2020 or my 2021, but I'm back on to the 019 where I was in 019 because that 2021, everybody went out and freaked yeah. out and started spending money. And now we're pulling ourselves in and we have to really regain. Our merchants downtown are hurting. I talk to them on a weekly basis. It's not fun sometimes, but we're surviving. And yeah. that's the biggest thing we are. All yeah. surviving, and we will also. Yeah, no, this is all really good, and thanks, Amanda, for bringing up the points that you are. I don't know how you guys are going to get all this done, but I, yeah. I, I, I well, suppose that's it's hard. Yeah, yeah. 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 the but whole timing thing. Yeah. It's just what yeah. the mayor was saying. Yeah, this is time sensitive. Yeah. You know, because of uh, the past couple of years with the chamber and the stuff that has happened there, um, we have a very, very narrow operating budget. Right. So we need to, number one, we want to start applying for grants okay. to be able to get a lot of this stuff. But we need to do stuff yeah. now so we can last until that grant comes in. And I'm sure that's a very common problem with a lot of entities yeah. here. And, and you know, I, I saw your presentation, so I'm eager about everybody seeing all of it uh, the other night. And I think it's a great presentation. Uh, as the Tourism Board, um, our, our funds come from... Uh, in, in the city, tourism tax, not in the county, so we are supposed to support the downtown area, not the county, unless they would institute a, a tax based on uh, uh, all their rentals and oh, Airbnbs okay. and all that, that, which that. they had not. Okay. Um, so so our, my focus is always on the downtown area, and I'm so happy that the, uh, that the Chamber of Commerce is up and running in such a fabulous way again with a lot of energy and I know some of you that are on the board um, so I, I would like to like if the chamber could also be a leader in in making sure that those shops have you know are pretty outside you know but I actually think what she just said is key about the rentals and charging a rental tax in the county uh -huh. because I don't think they're collecting the tax they, from Airbnb and whatnot okay. and then where does that go that could go to the Chamber of Commerce 
for you guys to continue to fund what you're doing. Absolutely. And I, I think that that could be a form of sustainable yeah. funding for you. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. So you get, we do get our money from the hotels. And we so don't okay. get it from the city. So the and a lot of people don't realize that. So we're focused on bringing people and events that's going to bring people to Trinidad to stay in our hotels. Okay. So and since you're the county, you, you may be able to rally it on a ballot measure. Right. Okay. That would help. Fantastic. Um, I do that. that. But you would feel like yeah. Okay. Yeah. Super. Great, because there's a lot of Airbnbs. There's a lot of Airbnbs out there. Yeah, and we are, yeah, we are collecting it's, from our Airbnbs now. The Airbnb, one of them collects the tax for you. Yeah, they all the other one doesn't. The, right, the right. A renter has right. to pay it, or not the renter, but the well, host no, has to pay the it. Right? Host, the, the host is still supposed to collect it and turn it in themselves. Right. They just don't do it they as just easy don't do it. Okay. as the actual Airbnb site. But if it was a county measure, then anybody that rented uh, an RV, a campground, you know, all you, you start space. to you start to talk about Stonewall in that area. Yeah. There's um, there was, there there was a lot of Airbnbs events. out there, and the tour we do collect on our city Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. awesome. Okay. So, thank you. One, one thing too that things are actually happening, mm -hmm. and that's one of the hardest things uh, when you. When you have these objectives, and especially you have groups to try to get them together, is it is seeing far enough out that you see that some of this is happening before you get discouraged and say, "Well, we have to do something else because it's not working." <laughs> yeah. And I think consistency, um, you know, as y'all gain consistency now with some ref reformation, and uh, mm -hmm. we've been more consistent here. Things are slowly happening. They're not going to happen overnight because you're training people. You're Getting businesses to stay open, telling them why, and you know, all that stuff. So I think if, if we continue yeah. moving forward and, and doing yeah. what we're doing, and then add to it as we go along. And and, and so it's a, it's a hard it's a hard bearing for me looking at it in, in many ways because Camille is right. I walk the businesses too. Our businesses are struggling to stay open. We do not have enough tourism in our downtown area to sustain. The area. Well, and our locals don't shop locally right. like they should. And so that would be one way that the, you know, that's one way that the, you know, that the chamber by doing exactly what Dawn said, you know, having more umbrellas on the sidewalk, making people are attracted to energy. If you, you if you have a mall on this side that has a thousand cars and a mall on this side and it only has twenty cars, where are people going to go, right? So people are attracted to energy, so we have to have energy in our downtown area for them to stop and walk around. And y'all did notice the theater's new face, yeah. right? Oh, thank you yeah. for that. Every So many people have commented, yeah, no, that's beautiful, can it's great. Can we continue with your presentation? Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> cool, we can. Okay, so one of the first ideas that we talked to Walsenberg about is doing a poker run, doing a motorcycle rally poker run. Seven card stud, so picking out seven places along the Highway of Legends where they pick up a car. Mm -hmm. um, and then the pack cash prize would be the winner, and maybe it all finished with a concert mm -hmm. in some place. That's fantastic. Raton does that with Trinidad currently, yeah, so I kind of want to see yeah. that format. So, and, and does Raton do it as part of their tourism thing, or do they just have a couple of motorcycle clubs that do I that? I just know that we're a stop at the La Quinta okay, over okay. the years. I think it's just cars. not their tourism. I think it's just okay. a group of people yeah. that are doing it. I just it think it could be yeah. much, much bigger. Yeah, no, absolutely. If we well, leverage they're, they're Colorado tourism. Yeah, they're doing it. It's a pretty big bicycle mm -hmm. ride that's coming through there. Mm -hmm. Right there, no. Uh, and what I've also put in here is different partnership opportunities and promotional exposure. So that's a, a Highway of Legends map that I just found on the right. internet, so mm -hmm. I stole it and put it on here. I'm thinking on the back of the playing cards. Oh, and incidentally, apologies to Jay Gillespie, but I know that those banners, the images on there could be repurposed to be the different suits, right? So that more with less, more with less, right? And then on the back, we might have a map of the Highway of Legends, because when people take those back, wherever they're going to go, they're going to have this card that has the Highway of Legends on there and the different stops, Profile Rock, Stonewall, et cetera, all those kind of things. So we have the registrations for the Poker Run, coupons and advertising inserted into the registration packs. Obviously, we would want a lot of realtors to be involved in this, and restaurants, and hotels. This is a great way for them to get exposure. Uh, maybe there's two small issues of new legends. One to promote the run. This is when it's going to happen. This is how you sign up. These are the different businesses you're going to see. And then the day of. Make sure to stop here and here. And here's where you pick your third card, etc. 
and maybe there might be QR codes for the specials. Oh, are you in the rally? Bring in your number and you can get blah, blah, blah. And that, I'm sure y'all can think of that, but I'm just kind of adding, adding some John Madden color there. Uh, so you do a Highway of Legends map and the registration pack and on the back of the flying cars. Next, farm to table dinner. Oh, and incidentally, I first talked to Marty about uh, some of these ideas with doing the coordinated calendar, and she said, I've been wanting to do that for years. Mm -hmm. So that was just affirming that I knew, okay, we were going kind of in the right direction. Because when I also brought up the farm to table idea, gratitude and attention to the underpinnings of farmers and ranchers, mm -hmm. right? It would also highlight the outdoor industry. CDR Associates is doing this whole economic development and outdoor recreation. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to get that feedback from them and then focus on, um, as well as 501c3s in the area. And so if I make any comments, it's just so that you know as the chamber and all, I mean really what you're doing is lovely, that maybe things that you don't know so that you could partner with these. Please. So Earth Mountain Farm does a farm to table dinner at the end of every year. Okay. And they do uh, as a fundraiser too. Fantastic. So that, that's also something that I personally have spoken to some people about, just privately, possibly mm -hmm. putting on a farm to table dinner because I'm in that business. Um, but I know that there's some interest in it, um, especially now that more and more farms are growing actual or vegetables, and mostly they've been ranchers. Mm -hmm. And the other, and I think also to draw attention, I mean, people who live here don't eat things that are grown here and that doesn't or that doesn't make sense to me like it's such an agricultural community yeah. that we should be eating what we're producing mm -hmm. um, and especially because it tastes so much better I mean because frankly the grocery stores are a little sad yeah um, <laughs> and so you know there is um, there are people who are in this sort of food world mm -hmm. who are interested in that um, I I didn't know about the mm -hmm. um, earth mountain but I, you could do more than one yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I, I've seen them where they have it right on Main Street in the center of a Main Street or a commercial street with a long table, and I thought that was a great idea. Well, too. Yeah. and I know that, like, there's a, I know of one, or several of them that they run in, like, the Denver area that, I mean, you, everybody's hungry to get those tickets, because, and they're not cheap, mm -hmm. um, because it is such an amazing experience and event. Yeah. And it takes a lot to put on, which is one of the reasons yeah. that our, the ticket price might be a little bit higher. I put in here ninety to one hundred dollars per one hundred and twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. All of that depends on how much it costs to get them all together. You know, we got to cover our costs, right? But we also do want to make it a really big deal dinner. Um, I just found out when we were doing this in Walsenburg, there's a lavender farm now, and there's a yeah. lot of beekeepers, which is amazing. Yeah. So we could try and feature that. Um, at the event, we might feature some of the charities that are in the area. I'll cover charities in a little bit. Um, also, we have a uh, website to promote the farmer's markets and farm-to-table dinner. If we start doing this every year, we might have a cookbook, you know, the first annual farm-to-table uh, farm dinner cookbook, and it's got different recipes from the different farmers. Uh, and then, long-term, I'd love for this to kind of facilitate a locally sourced, right? Uh, and Almac was the only example that I heard. I didn't know there were some other ones. But wouldn't it be fantastic, tourism-wise, to something have something out there locally we, sourced? We, we, just a few years ago, we wanted every restaurant in town to carry one item that was locally sourced so that we could advertise that we were, every restaurant in town had it, but and we didn't get a buy it because people were... Yeah. Yeah, were the and there's no like locally sourced police that say uh -huh. you have to have 60% of your product sourced. Oh, you're not 60%. Yeah. And I know, I, I know you get to think about seasons, one season you can have 60 percent and then we might have one or two things okay, it's also good. logistically really challenging as a small restaurant to be able to get that unless you have the time to go pick it up um I, finding farmers who are willing to collectively then come and deliver is the, the way to really increase that okay fantastic all right um and when i talked to uh marty and jared both of them they're like we were wanting to do that we want to do that after the rad race that lifetime fitness. So that's why I put the October 8th. There are some challenges with that because it's during hunting season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can, they mm -hmm. might not be great. Um, and the rad race, anyway, on, on October 8th, since that's during hunting season, that's when they're moving cattle, et cetera. But we just need enough time to be able to promote that. So yeah. I'm thinking next year. Yeah, but th there's a lot of different hunting seasons. I mean, just yeah. as someone who has. Yeah, there's, yeah. I, I don't know, I just want to make sure, you know, they sure. either wear orange vests or we let all the people in the area, all the outfitters, there's going to be bicyclists, don't mistake them for an elk. Uh -huh. yeah. um, 
So the promotional opportunities, dinner tickets, follow-up mailing lists, because somebody who's spending nine or one hundred twenty dollars per ticket on a dinner, it's going to be a great mailing list. Uh, advertising in the program at the event, and then again, long-term farm-to-table restaurants. I'm envisioning during a farm-to-table, maybe we have a video montage of a lot of the people who are outfitters who can take people fishing or take them hunting. Oh, I didn't know Hartez Ranch was here. I didn't know they did that, right? So they can see that there, and maybe there are also tables about some of the charities that are in the area. Everyone wants to support their local community. Mm -hmm. Next, I love this idea. Uh, Colorado Gateway collaborations. Um, pickleball. Anybody play pickleball? Yeah, I know several people that play that game. That's oh, becoming yeah. a really, really big it deal. Is. Look at the increase from 2014 to last year, nearly 5 million pickleball players. And that map represents the number of pickleball courts mm -hmm. per 100,000. Colorado is 12th in the nation for the number of pickleball courts per 100,000. So it's a big deal and it's really catching on. There's, right? pickleball courts. There's a pickleball group here, apparently. Oh, yeah. there's a huge pickleball. Yes. And they go to Raton back and forth to yeah. Raton. They, but they, they have to have a secret handshake to know about yeah. it. They don't yeah. have any yeah. information. This is no yeah. problem. They, they, <laughs> they do. So what if we do a collaborative tournament between Trinidad, Walsenburg, and Raton and call it mm -hmm. the first annual Colorado Gateway Pickle Tickle? Mm -hmm. That's cute. Mm -hmm. Redefining Pickle Tickle. Let's see. I just have one more. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank Someone you. has to start it. And then maybe two to three weeks in October, return Trinidad Pueblo, return Trinidad Walsenburg, Aguilar, wherever we want. Um, this came about, I asked Jared about this, and he sent me an email, and the string got huge. Tons of people, hey, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do some clinics. I'd love to do this. And then I understand that Raton just got a bunch of money for making indoor pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it be great if next year we had this three-week thing where the final event, the you know the final brackets were in red tone, and think about the merchandising. Think about how we could do that. We do the different logos on the paddles, so people playing up in Denver. What's the pickle tickle, right? It gives people a reason to get interested and come down here. Uh, merchandise. Long term, we have membership or league fees at community rec centers, and long term, this would be a consistent annual event that increases awareness and draws tourists. And maybe um, a youth component. Of that. I was oh, thinking totally. the exact same thing. Well, actually, the statistics first. say that 17% of players are over the age of 65, and one third are under 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Mm -hmm. Right? I thought you had to be geriatric to play pickleball yeah. because I know who does it. Well, well, you know, we do, we do have a first time <laughs> event line item on the tourism board for first time events. So okay. We, Fantastic. So this is just a sample of a different t-shirt that I've seen, Dink Floyd, uh, Make Retirement Great Again, and think about the back of the shirt. Look at all the sponsors. They're from Raton, from Walsenburg, etc., and it has the date on there. So be concert t-shirts, right? Who doesn't want a shirt that says Pickle Pickle? <laughs> Next, uh, and this came up just a couple of days ago, around National Night Out. If you all know about National Night Out, it's appreciating law enforcement. And uh, the photo I have on there is the now famous photo of the homeless guy with the machete. Um, so what if we did like a whole week, two weeks, a month leading up to National Night Out where we appreciate law enforcement and we go out to the schools. We uh, in, in act on drugs. It's a nonprofit that teaches kids about drugs, and it teaches about now the dangers, how the laws have changed, what that has meant to the state of Colorado. Also, if y'all have ever heard of, and this is just a side note, have y'all ever heard of the Montana Meth Project? So in 2010, I believe the year was, Montana was number one in the United States for the use of meth, right? And they, a uh, billionaire up there, I don't know what the name, but come, name is, he's nameless, uh, but he created this Montana Meth Project that got the whole community involved and involved. Uh, banners, painted murals, all this kind of stuff, and they effectively reduced the use of meth in Montana dramatically. And Colorado bought the Montana Meth Project in 2014, and they have been using that. A little since then, they're now it's fentanyl. But still, they reduced it dramatically. We could leverage some of those resources to go around this national night out leading up to it. We go to the schools, talk about career opportunities, just what I said, going to the, some of the schools and talking to them about employment, talking to them about internship, talking to them about financial education, because when people feel empowered, they might be able to break the cycle of being on EBT, right? 
uh, others, there's an entrepreneur certificate at Trinidad State College. We'd have inspirational speaker, speakers, job fairs, and talk about internships, all leading up to National Night Out. Another, nonprofits. Now, this one came up because, number one, charitable giving has increased by more than 40% over pre-COVID levels, and we don't expect that to decrease at all because everybody knows about the war in Ukraine and they're doing stuff to help. So we don't expect that number to go down. But what about our nonprofits here? Right? I went to a fundraiser for a nonprofit, and the silent auction items were kind of sad, and that's because everybody's trying to do more with less. That director couldn't go around to all these businesses and try and get really good um, silent auction items. So number one, what if we had a directory for businesses that said, oh, you know, with the chamber, so what are your passions? What do you like? Are you willing to donate goods or service to any kind of silent auction for any of the charities in the area, and what do you like? So then members would be able to, any nonprofit members, hey, I got a silent auction, they can look up and say, oh, here, Don Allen, have you already given away your, given away your allotment for, because I'd love to have something for a silent auction. Mm -hmm. And I also brought this up because when we went to Walsenburg, when we talked to Carlton, he said there's an entity there that focuses all on nonprofits, and last year they raised $70,000 for their nonprofits. And think about if they, if we had one organization managing a lot of the nonprofits and figuring out where they could plug them in and expose them to opportunities to for giving, that might be a good thing. Mayor, how does that work with Trinidad Community Foundation and them uh, giving money to the 501c3s? They shouldn't even be done. What it, what it is actually is the. The city gives the money to the TCF. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. what they do is they take and uh, put it out for applications. Yeah. And they get the applications and then they decide uh, you know, what the criteria that they're using yeah. to give out to, to, the, to, the, to the, the other five so, so, Amanda, that would be our local one with okay. the TCF, just yeah. to acknowledge. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. We'll yeah. reach out to them. Yeah. And I think that. This year, I think they, because of the city's contributions, I may be wrong, some yeah. around 40,000. Right. Right. So, right. yeah, so they, the ones that divided up, yeah. Okay. Different organizations. It doesn't mean that not more people show up at the city and want more money from the city, yeah. too, because that happens to our city. Well, yeah, so, that, that probably happens. the, I don't even know what you, what would you say the city does between TCF and all the 501c3s that come forward for the money every year? 100,000? <sighs> At least that. Yeah, at least that. Yeah. I know a few years back, one year I think we gave out to close to $200,000. Oh, wow. Fantastic. I mean, it was, yeah. it was pretty high. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that yeah. information. Yeah. We will incorporate that. We will. Yeah. Um, so, again, uh, trying to do more with less. Here's a uh -huh. suggestion of the directory. Because, Amanda, what it is, we take uh, from our marijuana funds uh, in the past, 5% uh, goes to oh, non great. Uh -huh. to nonprofits. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, there, there's been a substantial amount of money. We're seeing a decrease, of course, in revenue. So we're going to see a decrease in funding as well. But uh, it'll continue. Do you promote that whole thing that you that 5% goes to charities? Do you talk about that a lot? Because in Denver, when all of that was passed, it was, right, it was like, where's the money going? Where's the money going? Obviously, it's a much bigger city, and it's hard to get that kind of information. Yeah. But one thing I've really, I don't know if this is the time, but one thing I've really been impressed with our city of what they've done with the money is not only to help the nonprofits, is they've done, you know, things that are a one-time shot that we really need. And there is a list that's this long of the yeah. things that they have and done. And it grows. And it grows. Yeah, it grows. But <laughs> besides that is, and I tell people this too, because I, I, I'm always protecting my hometown when people say, oh my God, what are you going to do when the marijuana money goes away? It costs how much to run our city? Sixty-two million dollars, sixty-four million dollars. Uh, What's right, our budget? Right now, our, our budget for this year is uh, fifty-six million. Fifty-six oh. million, and we received two million dollars for tourism tax. I mean, for marijuana tax. So, it's not that much money. It is great things that we've been able to do pop-up things with, but our community doesn't exist because of marijuana. Our community exists because of all the different entities we've talked about today that pay taxes and and put money in. Yes, we'd like to buy those extra presents every year with the <laughs> extra couple million dollars, but our city doesn't run because of marijuana. And our city is not the emblem of marijuana. Our city is the emblem of small town Americana that's just trying to make it. Yes. 
And yeah. if we don't steward what the identity, we have yeah. no idea what it could be next. Right. Right. Okay. So, chamber events, uh, opportunities for small business, unique events, energize the community, draw tourism and investors, and again, embrace all sectors. Uh, evangelism of entrepreneur opportunities, vocational training, financial education to local school systems. We want to enhance the character, the character of Trinidad as a destination. So, that brings us to Santa Fe Trail Days. We've done Santa Fe Trail Days every year. We love doing it. This year was more of a success than it was last year, but it doesn't really have a particular identity. And I think we need to have like an identity, just like the city of Trinidad needs. We need ours a complementary identity. Uh, the number one reason people go on vacation to different places, that are number one thing is history, right? I love that. If we can, if we can do something around history, that's fantastic. Um, you see, like, have you been to Netherland? Nether Netherland does Frozen Dead Guy Festival. Oh, yeah, that's great. And they do, uh, Fruta does the Mike the Headless Chicken Festival. They do the coffin run in, call in Manitou Springs. Yeah. Does anybody have a farm animal without a head that maybe we could capitalize on? I, I was actually thinking, I've been thinking about this a little bit. I think we should maybe focus on like tarantula days. Tarantula <laughs> days? Yeah. yeah, because there's the big migration of tarantulas tarantula that days. come through. I mean, it's closer to La Junta, but you know, we have more right opportunity. Now. And it's That's like awesome. got this fun quirkiness. Kids would love it. You could have epidemi or what, what? What do you call bugs? Science. Oh yeah, no, that's a great um, idea. They are like teaching people about bugs. Like you can entomologist. Have, uh, thank you, entomologist. I was like not epidemiologist somewhere. There. <laughs> um, and I, I think tarantula days. It I has that, that quirky weirdness, right? That I is fun. That. And Trinidad has this like quirky weirdness that I think is worth cultivating because when you go to Steamboat or you go to Breckenridge or you go to Durango or whatever, I'm sorry, they are super generic. And I love those towns. I'm a big skier. You know, I have a business in a, a ski town for a little bit longer. Um, and, but they're, they're, they're super generic. They've lost all their history. Nobody's from them. Nobody's from those towns. And that's something here that I think is incredibly special. And there is this weird quirkiness as well as that long history. And I don't know as a tourism board how we really cultivate that, but I think it's something that we should not dismiss. You know, I mean, the Segway Cowboy, who has that? That's pretty entertaining, to yeah. be honest. And the Cartopia, and uh -huh. the Drop City history. I mean, all of that makes this place really unique. Al, uh, Al Capone, yeah, all, the, all, the all of those things. Mm -hmm. I love that. So, yeah. so in regards to to you just to put it out to the universe. Mm -hmm. we, we, we really fund first time events to start to get things going. So if somebody wants to come up with some start up, but I do think, but I do think that's the town, I, mean, I, I get that. I have a lot on my plate right now, so I said I'm not going to start well, 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 yeah. Yeah. I know. It's just just your but I think we need that. an event yeah. person. You, know, you have a lot of great ideas, a person to put all these things together. Oh, yeah. You're going to run into problems with that. So one of the suggestions would be to take some of these events and offer these events to some of the nonprofits to let them run them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great okay. ideas. Ooh, I love that. All right. Uh -huh. uh, and, and again, well, well, that's why we're trying to do the strategic partnerships with other areas so they can help us with the heavy lifting. Yeah. And, and actually, this next idea that we had for maybe an identity for Santa Fe Trail Days, we might capitalize on the gunsmithing, right? Oh, yeah. I talked to Dr. Epper about it. She likes the idea. She's more concerned about enrollment right now because they, they decrease in enrollment by 15% every year. So we're working on that. But she, he, she has value in this, in this idea. So we partnered with Trinidad State College. And the reasons, there's 5 million more first-time gun owners since the 2020 pandemic. 16.6 million bought a firearm as compared to 13.8 in 2019. So now it's about gunsmithing as an art form and safety. What can we do around education of our citizenry and tourists? Um, there's a whole heritage program up there that I just learned about. I mean, they have hat making. They have like oh, whittling. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Oh, oh, at the college. College. oh, okay. So oh, if you could wonderful. join that with the yes. Santa Fe Trail Days, I mean, people would dig that. Yeah, that that I think so too. Rocks. You know, yeah. they do a fabulous do job a fabulous at the college. Job. You know, we can also tie it in. A Whittington Center does a black powder contest, mm -hmm. black powder shooting kind. We did it around that time. We could tie that in together. Uh, so there's a number of different ideas we can do that. We can partner with the Whittington Center and the Colorado Shooting Association. Because I called them up in Colorado. He said, oh, I can get tons of people down there. I can get this, and I can get this, and I can get this. 
So that's another way to try and you know mm -hmm. reduce the heavy lifting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Whitaker brothers and mm -hmm. MRA, etc. Uh, and we'd have admission tickets, there'd be sponsorship of competitions, advertising in the program, registrations for competitions, and a mailing list revenue. Everybody wants that kind of mailing list, right? Uh, okay, also, uh, ADA compliant. Um, I know we no longer have Stephen Hamer, and he was a pain, but he did things that were needed in the city. And now uh, ABC, um, uh, they're a nonprofit here. They want to take over that and try and make sure that we get things very ADA compliant. I heard that they had to carry someone's motorized wheelchair down the steps at the Trinidad Triggers the other day because there was not a ramp to do it. Well, so we've got a house bill. Why don't we do adaptive adventures? They're a fantastic organization. So that's a uh, house bill. 21, 13, 18, passed in 2021, Outdoor Equity Grant Program. This is something I want to work on with CDR Associates because they've been doing the whole economic development about outdoor recreation. What are some of the events or some of the activities that we would want to do first? Could we ask the Adaptive Adventures group if they wanted to participate with the RAD Festival on a, to a degree? Oh. Because, oh. Like they, they, because I know they do a lot of cycling and they, th with it, I don't know like if the RAD is maybe too long, but maybe they can create a yeah. program within that for the adaptive adventures. Okay. Um, because usually that's how they work. They work in regular programs, but then they have additional assistance yeah. and some things that they do to support their the veterans primarily that are in that program. Well, and actually, one of the things, we were thinking about partnering with REI and Wounded Warrior, because Wounded Warrior uh, use the outfitters, right? Where would we go first? And REI has grants around adaptive adventures, so that would be some place we could tap. You know, Amanda, there's a, I'm not, I got the email, but I'm not sure when. Uh, it's coming on that they're having a meeting with the Radfest people coming up. Okay. And you talk to Jared. Okay. And it's probably too late to do a plug for that for this year, but maybe to build on it possibly for next year, and maybe you might call them. Awesome. I will. Yeah, the adaptive yeah. adventures, yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. I mean, that's oh, the whole yeah. thing. So yeah. if you called them and said, hey, we have this bike fest, right. we'd like to invite you to it. Yeah. You know, but the RAD would have to be kind of part of that conversation. Yeah. They could maybe even put it together this year because they already have those infrastructure. And I know Phil Long does a lot of uh, wounded warrior programs. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Again, strategic partnerships, right? Mm -hmm. These are some of the other chamber events that were that are scheduled for 2022, and we're looking into them. So the golf tournament, we're researching the cost, potential for revenue. A lot of people do golf tournaments, mm -hmm. right? A lot of, so, a lot right? of golf tournaments. A golf tournament, a lot of yeah. So do we really want to do that if it's not something kind of unique, right? Taste of Trinidad, we have that on our calendar, but now there's a website, or there's a Facebook page called Taste of Trinidad, and we've got the marketplace. That almost looks like a taste of Canada, or, or you know, that's where you can go to get a lot of different, a lot of different food. Um, so, what if we did like a grand opening or something for Marketplace, and we turned it into Taste of Trinidad and included like a restaurant map with accurate open and closed date times? Uh, the mayor told me about a challenge with Hickenlooper several years ago, where he was it a Saturday for that too. He came in. I don't know, remember what day it was, but he came to Trinidad and he had his entourage with him and. It was uh, close to yeah. 5 o'clock, he walked in around town, he couldn't find any place to eat. Yeah. And this was before Cedas was there, the previous mm -hmm. owner. They walked in there and, and they said, well, you know, can you know, we like to order something? They said, well, we're closed, but we can give you water. <laughs> Not good. But, you Not know, good. I think the chamber did, somebody did the Taste of Trinidad inside the Mitchell Museum a few years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I heard that. Job. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, and they did had it, tables yeah. up and... Okay, and it was really great. I think one thing if you're going down, and I, I should probably not jump ahead, but it, like that mentorship of business uh -huh. is maybe some workshops around online presence. And yes, actually, we now have a resource on our website, Small Business Resources, that we put on there a couple of months ago for the Small Business Development Center in Colorado. Has a whole lot of different classes, accounting, employment, etc. And there's a new organization called Energize Colorado that came up during 2020, during the pandemic, specifically focused on helping businesses create more of an online presence. We have that list of classes also on our website. 
and we, we occasionally post about that, et cetera. We just need a lot more people knowing about I think here it's such an analog town to bridge that gap a little yes. bit, maybe some in person. Stuff. I would love to bring in a couple of different business coaches uh, just to talk at lunch. And we, we're trying to evolve the lunches more into kind of an employment education thing, things that employers need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and the golf tournament, we have a lovely golf course. It's one of the best nine hole golf courses in Mississippi. We have a lot of golf tournaments. But yeah. you might want to consider just what you're doing for a fundraiser for the chamber, what you're doing with the pickleball. Get a team from Walsenburg and, you know, maybe an education team, a city team, another one, and do it from Raton and us or something. And, oh, that's cool. You know, make, you know, the communities or something. I mean, for a fundraiser, we have a lovely golf course. You know, yeah. and, uh, you know, we you know we have a welcome center, and of course, their job is to introduce them into not only the state of Colorado but into Trinidad. But we all, we have other frontline businesses. We're talking about all the convenience stores, and I always felt, and I've talked to you guys about that, is mm -hmm. to try to get the convenience store owners to train their employees. Maybe you guys can do a training. I don't know, tourist mm -hmm. who wants to do the training. It doesn't really matter who mm -hmm. does it, but. Uh, I've talked to the owner of the largest uh, convenience store uh, in town, yeah. and he thinks it's a good idea mm -hmm. and uh, to train some of his employees so when somebody from stops for gas, they can say, do you know the Rad Fest is on this weekend mm -hmm. or next weekend? Oh, that's good. Kind of give them, they're all, they, they'd also become ambassadors to the community, for our community. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes one of the biggest problems of Trinidad is lack of advertising. Um, the college thing this past weekend, I've talked to so many people that would have went if they even knew about it. Which college thing? You know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the reunion from 1970 oh, okay. to 1973. Yeah, yeah. And um, many, many of those guys, those people came down the farmer's market. They were all wearing the other t-shirts. And, but a lot of people I talked to in Trinidad had no clue, clue what was going on. And I think sometimes the biggest mistake in Trinidad is lack of advertising. And well, the other thing that's up, I mean, I, I brought this up to, to city council a while back, and uh, I would hope that somebody would take up the banner here, is that uh, the college students will be coming into Trinidad. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and I think so to true. have yeah. a welcome evening, I, I would say early September. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and have it at your meal fire. And I said, like, I, 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 I so agree with that. Maybe I, off, offer no. hot dogs, hamburger. You're, you're, you're so right. You're, 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 and, you're, and you're so get, right because. And maybe get some of the local. Uh, Restaurant owners, right, offer and, and something a lot of these, a lot of these college students come in with their parents, and they walk around downtown to get a fill of that town because their children, they don't live that far away, but their children are going away for the yep. first time you know, as freshmen. So yeah. we need to jump on this. Whoever we should take, jump on that. Whoever picks this up, they, we need to do that on. quickly because otherwise yeah. the time's going to come you're, and go. You're I've sorry. talked to Dr. Epler about this, and she thinks that that's one of the things that lacks mm -hmm. since she's been here is. The feeling that when the college students come in, that how welcoming we are as a community to yeah. the college students. Well, one of the initiatives we came up with in the chamber is to put together like a welcome packet that maybe has samples, it has coupons, it has a map of the area, et cetera. And we not only would go to students, but it could go to different organizations. It could go up to the, you know, the uh, uh, property owners of Santa Fe Trail Ranch. It could be at the welcome center, mm -hmm. et cetera. Those kind of packages. And we also talked about doing a fan night mm -hmm. uh, for. Uh, uh, Trinidad State College on a game night where we would appreciate all the fans there. Mm -hmm. So the, the question here is who's up to the challenge of leaving? Who's up to that yeah, challenge of doing that? And, that and, and, and another downtown. biggest challenge in Trinidad is your volunteers, the younger generation. So we're getting to the volunteers that are the 65, 70, but we're not hitting those 50, 45s. I thank God I got some this year at Farmer's Market, but it's tough. Uh -huh. It is well, tough. They don't have time. They, they're, they're, they're all working. Yeah. They don't have time. And it is tough to get the younger generations to do this because they are all working. And that is a major challenge for us in Trinidad. So, right so now. I do think one, one thing I see, and I don't know because I don't have a mainstream business here, mm -hmm. but I do somewhere else. And we had a previous city manager who unfortunately left that position in that town. 
and she hosted monthly meetings, and they were online, because I, I we opened our business during COVID, where you could go online, I think before that they had them in person, and they would just basically tell us what's happening in the community and mm -hmm. ask us, and I think the chamber is a good place for this, yep. is to have these monthly meetings, and I don't know how many business owners are part of the chamber, mm -hmm. that may be I, I, a challenge or not, but having that connection with the city, especially like through COVID, like all the changes that were happening yep. every minute, was really a lifesaver for me as a business owner in this town and knowing what was happening. They would tell us, okay, these festivals are happening. Oh, CDOT is going to work on this and it's going to affect your traffic flows for this week. Yeah. You know, here's 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 what resources we have for you as a business. You know, they gave us all these little patios for the parking spaces outside during um, during COVID and they've kept those even, you know, up there. and. And you know they did it intentionally and it's super cute and they all look consistent. But the town really was proactive in communicating with us and people from the lodging community, the restaurant community. So the same thing, like you know, with Santa Fe or with the colleges coming, having that meeting, saying, okay, yeah. co college starts. All these students are arriving next week. Right. Even information out. All these students and their parents are arriving next week. Right. Can we? You know, can you tell us what your hours are? Can we post it on a welcome for the colleges? Can we put it in their welcome packet? Because the college gives them all that stuff. You know, please be open. Please know that they're there. Here's T-shirts for Trinidad State. Mm -hmm. Like the whole town, let's like right. rah rah around it. Well, yeah. Yeah. I would say ten years ago we developed uh, the Trinidad Merchants Association. Okay. I still have an email of consisting of all the. I'm deleting it. But we would meet once a, once a month, yeah. and it worked out well for many years. I had, we had, it was me, Trish Keck, and Vivica, we all started it together. Yeah. And we would have economic development in there. We would have the chamber in there. We would have these monthly meetings to let everybody know what was going on. Just, and it wasn't the first Friday or the last Friday. We're not going there. It was just to tell everybody what was going on, who was staying open, what we could do to downtown, and it worked out very, very well. Huh. So we could actually and have you that could have our chamber those lunch. Meetings. And I, but That's it's different amazing. than the chamber lunch. Okay. We just we didn't go for no fanfare. We just said a meeting. Let's get our business done, and we ran because we were okay. all business owners, and we could only donate so much time to have these meetings. Yeah. And we ran with them. And a lot of times we met in different people's shops. Or the, the down theme, and we just had that meeting. We had a quick meeting yeah. to discuss what we were going to do, what's going to happen during Christmas time. One year, we all bought the same wreath. Okay. We all pushed in, and we bought the same yeah, wreath, and same. we hung them on our doors to let us to be unified downtown. We still have, we still have those wreaths, by the way. But anyway, that's what we did to for Christmas time. We told everybody. I, I'm not one of these people that believe in giving first, second, and prize to merchants. We work very hard to decorate our town, and some, a lot of those people were getting turned off. Don't have contests. Just tell everybody to decorate, because we start turning people off. Because a lot of these smaller stores didn't have the money to go right. out and buy all these Christmas decorations. So, well, I, so I think what Camilla is saying is there was a lot of unity. Okay. Yeah. So okay, okay. just to have them, just to have them reunite and have us to go down. Go ahead. She's dying. Well, I was going to tell you. interrupt this conversation, but we are starting a brand new networking called Coffee Talk, of which you are all invited. I heard August that. second. Right. And that's our goal. What time is it, and where is it at? Seven thirty to eight thirty is first going to be sponsored by uh, Keila Williams. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. I thought you were saying. Yeah, Only for three. an hour, and thank you for the suggestion that we will talk about what's currently happening. Yes, it was it was a very we all we had for many years we had the Trinidad Merchants Association, and we met in different little places. Then we ended up just meeting in one place because we got big, and then I would you know, but it wasn't it wasn't a long conversation. It was just real quick to let us know what we were doing for Christmas, yeah. what we were doing for Thanksgiving, who was going to be open, who was going to be gone. Um, you know, even the first Fridays, people are very turned off by the first Fridays right now. I don't know how to amp that up anymore. I, I, I don't know how to amp it up anymore, but uh, it, it is rough. Our merchants are feeling the pain, but something like that needs to happen. We need to bring our merchants together, and we need to get unified with our merchants downtown, and right now I don't think we are, we need to. Well, we our plan is to hold ours every... Uh, 
two weeks, first and third Tuesday of the month. The college is picking up the August 16th one. Well, we, it's, we don't have it confirmed, yes. yeah. but it's been suggested that they do this. Yeah. Um, so when you say they're picking it up, is there a cost to it? Or no. Well, we're going? suggesting it's $5 at the door. You do uh -huh. not have to be a member of the chamber as anybody can come. Uh -huh. You're given coffee, etc. The sponsor will be talking about whatever it is, their businesses, but we are also yeah. going to be talking about what's going on in the town, membership to the chamber, obviously. Right. Um, I mean, but we're trying okay. to, yes, I'm sorry. I, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 discussion. Okay, go it ahead. It is a long, big discussion, and I, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say. Amanda, I want to tell you, you know, to be honest with you, this thing with the college, I think that is in your little house. And my recommendation is maybe you can take it back to your board. Oh, yeah, yeah. See if you guys want to sponsor that. This should start building capacity for you guys. Uh-huh. And that's, a, you mean the, like the fan day and the welcome? No, I'm talking about the welcoming thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a gotcha. Yeah, yeah I, I do think that. I do totally. think that you have. I have tons of families that come in for the college. The parents look in the, the shop and see what's available. Then. Oh, I right believe you. I just have one more slide. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, and then lastly, the shop local. We want to work up to that. So, shop we're going to do a lot more stuff around that this year. Uh, and then these are chamber events that can be tacked on to other events. Just like you said, you're back to the numbers that you were in 2019. People are coming out of their COVID hidey holes, but still giving them a reason to come out and events. You're not getting as many people at the events as maybe you would have in the past. So we're talking about adding things on to existing events, maybe an event that, that a member is having or something that the city is having. We talk about doing a shredding. Um, you know, because businesses, they have a lot of stuff to shred, and they're limited in how much they can, so we can bring a shredding truck up here. And then we thought, wouldn't it be cool to have like a shredding and shredding? At the beginning of the summer, shredding pounds, right? So we have peak performance, we have the hot yoga place, these are the, or even the community center. These are the pickleball times. This is what we're doing for the summer, et cetera, so we can have those. And then lastly, a smoke spotting class. I attended a smoke spotting class at the Fisher's Peak Fire Department. Some of it might seem a little bit obvious, but it's not necessarily. I found it very informative. And with the constant fear of wildfires around here, I think that would draw people in. Also, I talked to somebody from the US Forestry Service who lives in, I think, La Vida, who would love to come and give a whole talk about what is being done to mitigate for wildfires in the future, legislation coming through Colorado, et cetera. Maybe a bear prevention class. Oh, that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a great idea. I don't think, right? yeah. we got so many bears going bear spray. on. The bears spray. No, maybe some trash. What, somebody selling some bear Locking spray? Locking trash. I, I have bears in my backyard in town. Yeah. Um, so these, I mean, really, I'm so excited about the energy for the chamber, and you've done just such a fabulous job. But if you were to say the, the, the goals of the chamber, top three or five, with all this that's laid out in front of you, do you have like a top list? Like Vision casting for, for what the city can look like and helping uh -huh. to steward that identity, whatever it is uh -huh. it's going to be. And, and bringing everybody together, doing a whole strategic collaboration, bringing more tourists down here. Obviously, I can keep going on and on. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's kind of where I'm seeing our places is, is uh -huh. getting those businesses ready for growth uh -huh. in whatever it is it looks like for what we want our identity to be. And, and with that vision, do you have a roadmap on how you're going to achieve that vision? Um, a lot of it has to do with events. A lot of it has to do with members. A lot of it has to do with even communicating with the local school systems and talking to the kids about what a fantastic place this is. And reducing welfare services, reducing the consumption of welfare services, and ideally, like reducing the median age of our community. Okay, well, very good. Thank you. I have one last quick question. Uh, you said you've been here 10 months? What brought you to Trinidad? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, my husband and I have five acres of land up in Livermore, which is just south of Wyoming, and we were planning on building there. Uh, but then 2020 happened, and the Cameron Peak fire stopped four miles from our property, uh, and it got very, very expensive to build. Uh, we are financial advisors, and most of our clients are now online, and they're fine with Zoom. So we thought, hey, the whole state's open to us. Where do we want to go? And we found the coolest house here. And we looked at the city and said, yeah, it's really cool. I love living rural. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons we came here. Cool. And were you in Denver before? In Thornton. Oh. We were in Thornton for 16 years. I was originally born and raised in Dallas, Texas, and my husband's from Nebraska. His biggest concern is moving down here rural. The only thing I really miss is Nordstrom's rack. Otherwise, 
And the cowboy. Oh yeah. Are you a fan? Um, That's hard to say outside of the state. I've been in Colorado state. for five years, but I was a Texan forever. Oh, were you? Okay, yeah. You come here and you talk about the Cowboys. The joke was when I was well after when I became an adult already. If there are uh, three Dallas Cowboys in a police car, or no, three, sorry, three, I ruined it. Three Dallas Cowboys in a car. Who's driving? A police car. <laughs> um, they, they went through a lot. They used to be like America's team, right? Got to look at the Broncos for that. Yeah. 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 They were the yeah. first ones to really well, thank you so much. It was amazing. Yeah. And thank you. And yeah, uh, if you can get anybody to do any of those events and come to us, we would surely yeah. like to see any of that happen. That was amazing. Any of it? Is there, there's priority. There, there are things you go, oh, that seems like it's easy to do. The adaptive adventures. Yeah. I, that takes a lot of money yeah. to make. I, I think where we're at is just, or where I'm at anyway, is implementation. How the event looks, if they have the backing, if they know what they're doing, if they yeah. have, if the, if the paperwork looks good, and we, we are we are very encouraging to all events in China. It's going to it's going to take somebody with the passion to see and to these opportunities. To see some like, of these if you just lives. came and said we want to do the pickup wall, that would you, you'd have to fill out the paper, say it's going to be this weekend. This is how we're going to do it. There's going to be a, a league from you know under under 15. A league, you know, you'd have to lay, lay it out. I, but, yeah. I personally think though some of the stuff that you have around the the like the farm to table dinner mm -hmm. and the shop local, I think those are things that are pretty easy to execute on a small level right away. Are they? That yeah, I think so. so I mean, so the farm to table takes coordination, but there's there's some energy around that. Okay. You know, I think you need four or five people who are like, yeah, this is what we want to do, and they'll do it. I mean, so we can do it on a small scale. My biggest question on that is mm -hmm. if you're tying together several, you know, a vegetable farmer, a meat producer, et cetera, do you hire, who is it, who's a chef who can coordinate a menu Alex, like that? Alex. From well, Calma. you get different oh, restaurants well, to do. Yeah, to do yeah. you know, I would well, get different restaurants. I, I to actually do. think for a farm to table, you want a chef, and well, you want somebody true. to you want somebody to also then do the sommelier work and do the wine pairing and the food pairing for that kind of a yeah. dinner to really like create for something the, to go something to. really special. Yeah. You know, if you're getting all the different restaurants, that's more like Taste of Trinidad. That's a different kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you get a chef, or you get you know one who does pastry, one who does. The main course in one yeah. yeah, I, I just didn't know how much coordinated, like, yeah. how much, like, and, 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 and it takes be, it over. It might be, it might be just is, it might be it helpful so. for the farmers market showing up yeah, and seeing. Uh, I got to leave here shortly. But okay. I'd like to hear from. Uh, okay. Uh, I gotta go. Kayla. Kayla, before I leave. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> in regards to the chamber? No, is it, are you going to talk about the mine or? Oh no, I'm here with the chamber. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's here to support her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> and Kayla, I'm so glad yes, you're here because you. you're also the market segment we need in Trinidad. Oh, yeah. And there's so many more of you now than there were 10 years ago in really your age are. group. And, oh, and I, know. I, I am so grateful for all of you because we need you. And the COVID has done anything in my opinion that's brought a lot of people my age back to our yep. home. Right. So I think that's definitely something that we have. Yeah. 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 Okay, very good. Um, I don't believe there's, I, and all you guys are with the chamber, so thank you so much, everybody with the chamber. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, approval of minutes from July 18th. Anybody would like to make a I make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Approval of invoices, no. Phillips Broadcasting, Outfront Media, Mile High Outdoor July, and the fulfillment postage monthly for the Chamber of Commerce. I make a motion we pay our bills. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. New business, a uh, renewal of a mile high outdoor billboard on uh, new, uh, that sets outside of Denver right hand read, uh, $700 per period, 13 week period, and we have been doing that <laughs> for a long time. This is a long time. We should tell the chamber. Yeah, this is I never see that before, and I drive it all the time. All the time. I look for it every single time. You've got to look for it. People tell me all the time about it. I have so yet to see it, and I look for it every time I go. It, it is really nice. It's just, it, 
It's all nice. I, I literally drive that about all, every two weeks, and yeah. I've never seen it. Che checking up, uh, people checking out the front desk, though, my front desk clerks ask me about and it. And they see it. So people check it in and say, hey, turn it in September. But we're, all, we're, all, we're going to have to make a motion to renew this. I make a motion we renew it with one comment that we had. We are. Uh, uh, Marty did tell me that, that she is planning on, she's asking a few people to bring new pictures in, that the events that are starting to happen, uh, the, 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 the events are starting to happen here coming along. We need more boards, though. Like the electric board? Yeah, well, that would be a great That would be a great thing, too. As far as advertising things in town, I've seen those used yeah. really well. I actually disagree with that. I'm kind of on top of the board. I don't think they're effective at all. Well, I've used them for, for 30 years. I know. I, very effective. Chris, I understand that they're very effective, but I think too much add on that when people are flying 80 miles an hour. They've, got they've already got their destination in plan. And they're, and they're I, looking at their phone. They're looking at their phone for stuff, and I think we ought. Oh, I talked to people. Okay, that, so let's stick to but let's anyway, stick to this. Let's stick to this. I, I, I uh, yeah, I, I just I have a lot of comments about that board. I think we need to see a picture of it. Um, Chris went ahead and made a motion. Are you sucking? I'm sucking it. Um, but she did. Marty at one time did send us pictures of that. Bill. Yeah. Well, we need to we redo need that so when you go down, you know exactly where you're looking. But literally, is. I haven't seen it. But I have so many people that will say to me, "Hey, side." So, um, so that and, and you're going to have to ride with Tommy one day because he literally stops off the side of the road and admires it really, really well. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So roll call uh, for it. Hi. Okay, uh, next meeting is August 10th for a work session. Thank you guys. That was a long meeting to get through. I think the, the chamber has a lot of good energy right now, which is... I think they have a lot of good energy. And I, are we still recording? Um, yes. One thing I, I wanted to ask them is why they moved it down to the field instead of having it downtown. Uh, I yeah. think they need to bring it there back downtown. There was a lot of negativity. Because there was a lot of negativity. What's that? To the sock we can't get it. And I don't know what the the um Santa Fe Trail State. Yeah. There was a lot of people that it was horrible. Yeah. And where was it before? It was Always amazing. downtown or Manus. Central Park. They need to go back downtown. Yeah. There I, I saw it there and I was like, what is this? And like I didn't it just felt like a carnival. Yeah. But I don't know. It's yeah. yeah. But I you guys are all amazing. I'm gonna take this. Thank you for all that you do. Hello, this it's on. against the law to be on your cell phone when you're driving. Yeah, but that I doesn't mean that the person who's driving is looking at the passenger. I'm headed there. Who's looking okay. at what they're doing? Thanks. Are the other passengers? Okay. Bye. Oh well, I well, took that call. You know. Ouch.